opportunity to have fellowship with you through your word and by your spirit. Father, you have chosen to name us, to name us according to your will, as new creation, people who are seed of Abraham by faith. We thank you for the separate life that you gave unto them, choosing them from the ends of the world to become unto you a peculiar, precious people, special purchase possession. Father, tonight we ask that your glory will beam upon all our viewing centers. The heart of our viewers will be enlightened today to see, being flooded with the light, to see the light of your countenance. We ask the Lord you bring understanding to the simple. Father, unite our heart to fear you and walk in the light of the word. Holy Spirit, let the energy of the word stir our heart unto faith, wisdom, and the prosperity of the gospel that you profess through the writings of the apostles. Spirit of God, we highly exalt your name. You are Lord. Therefore, let it be liberty. Liberate all those who are under the whiplash of the devil. Let your word, the sent word, deliver them. Heal them of every form of affliction. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm so privileged to come your way once again with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's still Abundant Life Embassy. And this is our Wednesday online service. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are, I have greetings from the throne room unto you. That you, the peace of God, His mercy, His grace will multiply upon you day by day. Hallelujah. Well, every encounter of the word sets you apart from the rest of the world. God has destined to he has destined um, for a select people who are called the elect to be called to be to be called in by the by the gospel into fellowship with him. And since the day you heard the gospel, your fellowship with the Father and with the Son has become very perfect, very intact. For all our sin and come short of the glory of God. But then through Jesus Christ in you, you are the manifestation. Of the glory of God hallelujah so wherever you are you are the glory of God and listen we continue with the message possessing the gates hallelujah um, last week we looked at what gate is like three weeks ago uh, tonight it's equal to what we've done uh, for the past three weeks and um, I am believing God for special grace to uh, wrap up this message because we have a lot more to share praise the Lord now we said that gates represent entryways into cities or to the unknown place of significance and then we said gates weren't just a doorway through which uh, people enter city but they also uh, happen to be a place where prophets cried in their guard rooms where kings also sat and made ad hoc laws or adjudicate matters we also explained that it's a place where the elders sat so the gate in the gate happens to be i told you that there were two gates right the first the outer gate and then the inner gate uh, which said as um, a second line of defense at a fixed point that um, that defensive massive wall, you know, that uh, 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 for protection and also for entrance. I remember I told you that um, do not allow intruders to get it through your gates. Um, keep intruders out of your territory. Um, that's what the Lord wants you to do. Um, we also spoke about Mordecai and um, to understand better why we went to Mordecai if today being the first time joining our broadcast um, There is something such a thing called um, the seed of Abraham and um, Relevant to the discussion we had last week We I explained to you that you are a Jew and you have to understand God had eternal purpose for calling out a Jew and that is rooted in the book of Genesis chapter, chapter 17 from the verse 6 and I'll make thee exceeding fruitful, exceeding fruitful, and make, and I'll make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Oh my God, my God. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. That's Abraham. Look at it. And thy seed after thee in their generations. So not only one generation, but several generations. Then it came for an everlasting covenant. So that covenant is everlasting. That agreement that God entered into, that kind of partnership that God entered into with Abraham and his seed is an everlasting. Everlasting means forever. It also means eternal. It is perpetual. It, uh, that's life without end. 
it doesn't end so whatever god told abraham it's an everlasting covenant between god abraham um uh, and his seed after, after after him in their generations and i made the attempt to explain to you why in their generations not only the generation of abraham but abraham oh my god happens to be an eternal eternal name you see the father of faith so god said generations god foreseen that in him um, a seed shall spring forth the bible says in isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 that and they shall come forth a, they shall come out they shall come forth they shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse and a rod and a, out of the stem of jesse and a branch out of his road now out of his roots and um that has to do with the 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 stem of jesse that's the family line of jesse right that's judah and then um that's of david as well the son of david being jesus a branch out of his roots the roots of david good now that seed according to galatians happens to be um 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 jesus and we are the generation of christ we are that generation isaiah 53 uh, reading the verse 6 we are that generation that jesus that was spoken about in prophecy so he said our establishment covenant with between me and thee and i seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a god unto thee and and, and unto, to the, unto thy seed after thee and i'll give unto thee and to thy seed after thee a land wherein thou art a stranger and all the land of canaan for an everlasting possession and i'll be their god so god said listen this is an everlasting covenant that i'm having with i'm established between myself and you and your seed after you in their generations again we see that god said i'll make thee and thy seed after thee um oh my god uh, in the land wherein they sojourn as, as strangers i'm going to cause them to possess the land and god called them strangers i explained to you that we are so strange to this so we are peculiar if there be any infestation of sickness or outbreak of disease or what have you we are strange to that sickness we are different we are peculiar we are new the word strange over there also means new we are new creation different Whoa, was was god seeing all these i'm saying when he spoke to abraham yes god lives in eternity and i have i have um, ample proof before we go to, we go there let's look at um genesis um um 22 and 25 20 20 20 24 so 22 um the verse 17 that in blessing i'll bless thee and multiply and multiply thy seed as the stars of, of the heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies your seed abraham shall possess the gates it's an everlasting covenant that god made or god entered in to with um father abraham and his seed after after him and said his seed shall possess the gates of their enemies if you then become an enemy of the jew you'll be in trouble yes they possess your gate and i'll explain to you how that it also worked in the life of father abraham using a lot of action example as a case study now in genesis 24 the verse 60 the bible says and and they blessed rebecca and said unto her thou art our sister and thou be the mother of thousands of millions and let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate them if you hate um a jew oh my god they shall possess your gate gates i told you represent place of authority the courtroom in the spirit realm is also gate in the gate entry point that's where um matters are allowed events are allowed to happen or, or not to happen approval is given at the gate or disapproval you can approve of an incoming or an impending danger or event or you can just question whatever has begun already because you are at the gate and i explain why Mordecai sat in the gate i explain why lot was also in the gate in genesis 19 verse 1. i explain genesis 18 verse 1 that um father abraham was also in the tent in the tent door in the tent door which also represent gates how could he be in a tent door how could he be in the door and i explain so to understand better um what the the nuance of the greek as translated in the english means to be in the gate you need to go to uh, maybe our first episode our second and then there's a third episode online so please do all to visit that place to understand better so to possess the gate of 
your enemies. And it refers to every believer. For the sake of those who um, who um, just joining today, of course, we have just a um, few things to discuss today. Um, but then we shall go very deep. I, I, can, I can promise you that. We're going to go very deep. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. Good. So, in the book of Ephesians, um, Galatians, rather, Galatians first, Galatians 3, the Bible says in the verse 9, now, okay, verse 8, and the, script, the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the healing through faith, preach the, before the gospel, preach ahead of time the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed, so then they would be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So they would be of faith, they are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, in the verse 14, the Bible says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That which God spoke to, to him, a spirit, God spoke to Abraham, that we might receive that promise. It's an everlasting covenant, everlasting promise. And to us, it is not a promise, but it is a fulfillment of his will, being in Christ. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, who was blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right. So that's Ephesians 1 verse 3. We are blessed with all. Now, so, the Bible shows us in verse 16 that now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He said not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And to thy seed, which is Christ. So the promise was made unto him. And God saying that, and in your seed shall all nations be blessed. All the nations of the earth be blessed. That's Christ himself. That's the seed. Not even Isaac. But God has passed through them as physical point of contact. Journeying down history. To the time of Christ, and here we are as <laughs> descendant of Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you shortly. Now, um, in the verse 17, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, that was confirmed ahead of time in Christ. Now, that's the law which was 400 years, 440 years after, cannot annul this annul that which should make the promise of non effect. For if the inheritance be of the law. It is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So God promised him by faith. Not by virtue of following a law, but God gave to Father Abraham by faith. God spoke to him. And he, the guy clung on to it. He cleaved to the words. He held on to the words. He believed God. The verse 28. I want to read 28. Father, we thank you. So praki bahashalada. Reko Shafaladabahosetele. 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We have put on Christ. 28. There is therefore, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Uh-huh. Neither is there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. So when God said to Abraham and to his seed, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. We are inheritors of that promise. Hallelujah. So whatever God gave to Abraham, God foresaw. Are you getting it? God foreseen that you're going to show up through Christ. Spoke forth. And we have received the promise of the Spirit. Now, I want to... Um, help you understand something in the book of romans shortly now um romans chapter 9 the verse 4 who are israelites to whom pertained the adoption adoption the glory uh-huh the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of god and the promise Whose are the fathers? So the fathers are theirs, right? I'm talking of Father Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, good, the patriarch. And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Concerning the flesh, Christ came. Who is over all God blessed forever? That's Christ being God forevermore. Let's continue. 
not as though the word of God has taken an effect for they are, they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they, they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, so Midian was also born of Abraham after Abraham, Genesis 25, reading verse 1, you see it over there. Now, Father Abraham also, um, 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 uh, what do we call it? He had to marry again. You know, he took a wife and gave birth to to, to, to sons. I, I think um, six of them. Yes. That's the 25. Six of them. And now Abraham again took, that's Keturah, took, took a wife and her name was Keturah. And she bore him Zimran, Zimran, uh, uh, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Six of them. Right. So these are all children of Abraham, but they are not, um, to them, pertaining on the promises. But through Isaac. Are you following? Through Isaac. And through Isaac, then God chose Jacob, the sons of Jacob, not Esau. And that's when, and then how he got the children of Israel when they went to, into exile. That's in Egypt. They suddenly in, in Egypt and became slaves and what have God made a nation out of them. Praise the Lord. So these are the children of God. Now, the Bible says that not because the, uh, um, not because the, uh, um, the seed of Abraham are the all children. That means they are not all the children of God. It's only the promise that God made through the promised one, Isaac. Hallelujah. So we also bless Father Abraham. Praise the Lord. And everything that God said over there he relates to us, to us, well, as blessings. I'm blessed with a Jew's blessing. I'm blessed. I'm a Jew. Praise the Lord. Spiritual Jew. Hallelujah. So I explain further. As I read on, we, we don't have time for that today. Now the verse 8, that is, the which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are accounted for the seed. So we are the seed. We are the seed of God. Now let's continue. So last week, we looked at someone, the seed of Abraham, the Jews, the blessings of the Jews. The Bible says to possess the gate of, the, of, of your enemy. Now anyone that, we don't make enemies, but anyone that um, tries to... Um, um, be incensed against us or tries to withstand us or try to become an enemy or to have himself to blame because um, God will not spare them. We don't fight. The weapons of our warfare are not cannot by the mighty through God to putting down strongholds, casting down imaginations. And any high thing, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, that simplicity of the knowledge that we have in Christ will bring them down. Now, you realize that we look at the book of Esther, and um, it's, it's true that uh, Mordecai chose to sit in the gate. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. In, in the verse 11, Shala God, oh, see her. In the verse 11, Esther 2 11, and Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women to know how Esther did and what should become of her. And I explained to you how to keep possess the gate. That each and every day you have to be in God's presence, right? We already carry the presence, but you must approach the throne of grace in prayer. Uh, you know, Apostle Paul says in Galatians 5, um, the verse 25, if we, if we so, uh, yes, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So we have to apply that consciousness. See, that understanding that we carry his presence and to engage him daily. When a car walk up and down the four courts, the gates of the women while the contest was ongoing, you don't go sleeping. You have to walk up and down. And then we looked at um, some few, yeah, few thoughts was well. in the verse 19. The Bible says, and, and when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate, and that's where he sat. A posture that connotes authority. He sat in that gate to adjudicate matters in the spirit. Whatever was coming the way of the king or the palace, so long as Esther was there, the seed of the Jew was there, um, the seed of Abraham was there, yes, he had to keep the gate. He had to be a watchman. 
God said we shall possess the gates of our enemies. Let me give you an example before we come to the book of Esther. We we'll look at how Mordecai took over the place. Now, you realize that in Genesis chapter 15, God said, and after this thing, the Lord appeared unto after these things, the Lord appeared unto Abraham in a vision. Right, uh, uh, saying, "Fear not." So, what, after what thing? After what? So it was after chapter 14, last week I told you, verse 6, when um, um, Abraham and his trained armed men, 318 soldiers, went into the battle and recovered everything, took booties or see, of the uh, enemies, uh, the spoils, and brought them, the lives and all the goods, the treasures. The kings uh, decided to give to um, um, Father Abraham. Um, Shatala Gavahaya. Um, Fula Gredo Siko Rabahayada. I want to read to you the verse 20, 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord. You see, as a, Jew, as a seed of the Jew, the seed of Abraham, or as a Jew, spiritual Jew, we have a mindset. There's a mindset. I have lifted up my hands unto God. I have already lifted up my hand to God. Look at it. Now I have sworn, I'm in covenant with the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. <laughs> Our God is a possessor of all things. He's the possessor of all things. The heaven and earth. That I will not take from a, 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 a thread, a thread, even to a shoe latchet. That's even less or the latchet of a shoe. That And that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say that you say, I have made Abraham rich. The guy knew that God would prosper him. He knows that he possess something. Listen to me. I even though oh, you think you have the gold, you have what by possess the gates. I want to read something to you. It, it, it will make sense to you today. Now look at um from the verse 17, Genesis 14, 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedat uh, Kedor Lauma of the king which were the kings that, that were with him at the valley of Shave, which is in the king's dale. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Oh my God, symbolic of the body of Christ, bread and wine. The body of Christ, the blood. That's communion, right? Good. Brought forth bread and wine. And he, he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, he blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God. Mm. Blessed, this opposition. Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. To whom was he referring? Is it God or to Abram? To Abram. To Abram. Look at it again. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, comma, opposition, possessor of heaven and earth. So, it is it of blessed be the God of Abraham and then, no, no. Look at it. Blessed, and he blessed me and said, blessed be, the, be, be Abraham. See, not God. Abraham of God, of the Most High God. Possessor. Oh my God. Leko Shalaba. The Lord gave him. A possessor of heaven and earth. I don't know why you are so lucky. I don't know why you are so behind, slacking behind. I don't know why. But you are a possessor of all things. Are you a seed of Abraham? I want to show you some secret tonight. Are you a seed of Abraham? Are you a Jew? Look at this. Mercy is the whose whose you see. My God, whose um descendants are unknown? Genealogies, you see, it's unknown. The, 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 the genealogy is not it's not known. The family tree is not known. It is believed to be the spirit of Christ as a priest. The guy just existed. No beginning or end. And he appeared after the slaughter of, of, of the enemies of Sodom and Gomorrah, especially the Lord, the nephew of Abraham. And he said, listen, take this bread, take this wine. And he blessed him, saying, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. God said, and you shall be my, he said, you shall be my people, I shall be your God. Genesis 17, 6 through 8, I'll be their God. I'll be their God. So, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Not to God, but Abraham now he's referring. Possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God. You see, now 
now God, which has delivered thy enemies into thy hand and gave him tight of all. And Abraham gave tight of all things to Abraham, to, to, to Melchizedek. So, you should know, the Christian, Father Abraham, the Christian, is the possessor of all, the heaven and earth. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And has see, see, the Lord has willed that to us. Let me explain critically. We are still sharing on possessing the gates. The gate of thy enemies or whatever. You possess all gates. Especially when they hate you, you possess their gates. We have our own gates. But when they try to contend, I will show you what God said about, about these people in Isaiah 49. I will show you shortly. Isaiah 49, I will show you shortly. Now look at this. So, um, uh, he blessed Abraham. Now, after this, in chapter 15, verse 1, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham, saying, Fear not, I am with thee, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. <laughs> Don't fear. Oh my God. Don't fear. Oh my God. Now look at something. Genesis 13. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, there, were, there was a strife, a, a, you know, a, um, a fearsome, uh, uh, um, um, contention between the henchmen of father abraham and that of lot his nephew of course abraham happens to be the, the uncle and lot being the nephew and abraham not she there's this mindset imagine before Melchizedek met him you know the guy already knew uh I, i'm blessed of god right uh, I, um, I have to go into this battle and we <laughs> just after the slaughter Mekis that comes to bless him and pronounce God's blessings. Did Abraham see the blessing like this? Physically, no. But received that as a promise. Believed. That was during the physical era, the physical order. Things were done physically. For instance, in Genesis chapter 1, you see creation over there. Yeah, that's recreation. But you see, that, that, that's, the, that's really a creation, right? God created in the spirit. In God's spirit, in God's imagination, God saw that it was good. Mm, let it be light. God did that in, in his spirit. In chapter 2, God created, God formed, God made with his hand. The words are Yasa and Bara. God, Yasa, he got formed. God, Asa, God made. Now, God, Bara, in chapter 1, God created, God created in his imagination. I can use my mouth to create and yes it will happen so there's the physical dimension and then there's there's also the spiritual dimension to it good so look at it abraham received his blessings from the verse 17 my god and said in the verse 23 that i will not take anything from you i'm, I'm blessed already i have received some blessing i, I took the communion ah, yeah, yeah. which is symbolic of the body of christ so when abraham had a four taste the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 10, that Abraham, even in his days, he foresaw Christ. He wished to be. Ay, 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 ay. Listen, David said, I have always said a lot before me in Psalm 16. And because it's on my right hand, I shall not be moved. I have said a lot always before me. I focus, set my gaze on him. In 1 Peter 1, verse 10, the Bible says, All those prophets inquired diligently, seek, seek, seeking, searching what manner of time. Not the spirit of Christ was in them. This signified that Christ, this grace will come. We're in the era of grace, indeed. Abraham received this in a figure. All that God told him, he received them in a figure. In, a, in a Hebrews chapter 11. He received them with faith, with the hands of faith. But look at it. When he received the, the bread and, and the wine, symbolic of Christ. Symbolic of Christ. The guy said, ha, I'm done. I will not take anything from you. I am rich. I am a possessor of all things. Can you write that right now? Type it right now. I am a possessor of all things. Type it to flow in that grace. I am a possessor of all things. Possessor of heaven and earth. Oh my God. Blessed be, blessed be Abraham of God. The most high God. Possessor of, of heaven and earth. It's, it is called opposition. It separates noun phrases. Set them apart. Set off the first one. Let be God of Abraham one. Possessor. I will show you why. Lord sat in the gate. It's 
there's a consciousness that every believer must have. A consciousness. There's a mindset that we, we have to assume. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The king said, take it. He said, no, I'm not going to take anything from you. No, no, no. So like you don't say you made me rich. Never. How dare you, king? <laughs> you cannot make me rich. How dare you? There's a mindset of the Jew. Now look at something, chapter 13. Now look at it. So there was a, there was a, a, a fight between the two of them. Abraham had some kind of consciousness. He had some kind of mindset. Look at this. Uh, you know, you can be on campus and say, listen, I possess all the... Even God is our inheritance. He is the, David said, it's the portion of my inheritance. It's my lot. When we say the Lord is my portion in the land of the living, do you understand it? If we say we are heirs of God, it doesn't mean that we belong, that God owns us. No. It means we own God. God is our own, our possession. He's our God. Don't you understand it? <laughs> my God. I will not take anything from you. Not a trade. No, it's all right. You don't say you made me rich. Oh my God. See, and I, just understand why some people don't want to. Some family members or somebody don't want to help you. You are more, you worth more than what you think. Maybe you cannot see. That's why. You don't need their help. <laughs> a possessor. Kalado Shiko A possessor of all things. First Corinthians 3. All things are yours. That's what Apostle Paul said. All things are yours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, so look at it. And in the verse 5, and Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents, and the Lord was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. For you know, God has already blessed this guy that whatever he, 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 he does would, would multiply. And anyone that is, you see, that kind of blessing is very contagious. People around you get, you see, they get inf in infested in a way. They get uh, contaminated with this kind of blessings. Are you getting it? They, 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 they attract that kind of blessing. And if they also stand against you today, attract something to us all. Not as a result of you praying for them, but for liking you, there's a reward. And the Bible says, if you give a, you see, a cup of cold water, Matthew 10, to a servant of mine in my name, any believer, anyone that believes in me, and the little one that, even the least one that believes in me, you shall not lose your reward. There is something we carry, and when you go to the house to preach to the houses, oh my God, look for a, you know for a worthy man, one that is worthy of of your peace, and leave your peace there. Make your peace dwell there. We carry something. We carry something. In the absence of peace, where there's war, there's no development. There's this retardation of progress. But when there's peace, there's progress. That's what we carry. We carry something. We carry something. As a, as a Jew? Don't you know you are a Jew? Let me show you something very fast. Now the Lord was not able to bear them, you know, because they, 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 that they might dwell together. For the Satan was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there, 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 there comes a time that two island people cannot dwell on the same street. If I'm in mean, Dansoma, you cannot be, you have to be far away, maybe East Lagos, because I'll possess all the, all the. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God. You know, that's what God wants to do with us when Christ comes again in the second coming. God, we're going to possess the nation. So if you're working for God, work diligently. You can, you know, you can be poor in spirit right now and you'll be rejoicing later on. It doesn't matter what you're possessing on the, on the outside. It doesn't matter the kind of accolade that men are awarding themselves with. In Matthew 16, 15 verse 16, the Bible says something which is very profound. 16, 15, that ye are they that justify yourselves among men, before men. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. So they can fight for positions. But listen, there's a kingdom, the new earth. We shall come to the earth again. This earth will, is corrupted. It will be wiped away, dissolved, and a new one will, will, be, will, be, will be made according to the scriptures. And we're going to be reigning over nations. <laughs> if I'm here, you need to be far from because, uh, my God, the grace that I carry, Kola Gabaha. And we're going to do that right now that's what god intends us to be doing now to start living that big life now the big manism <laughs> that's a fit life big manism praise the lord oh my god my god now let's continue and so abraham says something now and there was a strife between 
the herdsmen of Abraham's Abraham's cattle, cattle, and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, uh, and between my herdsmen and, and thy herdsmen, for we be brethren. Is it not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I'll, t I'll go to the right. And if thou wilt depart to the right, then I'll go to the left. I, I am not looking at the land as it were in the physical. I don't care. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. I, I know what I carry, Abraham. Say so. Lot, don't worry. Even though you are my nephew, you go ahead and choose. <laughs> and Abraham thought maybe the boy would say, Oh, oh, daddy, choose and let me choose afterward or give me out of your own volition but the guy didn't do that he went ahead to choose don't set yourself up to be an enemy you'll be cut you'll be cut off you, you'll be grounded yes you can't kick against the priest you can't do that and if that's if that, if that stone falls on you the rock falls on you you'll be grounded you'll be grounded into powder you don't stand against the seed of Abraham no matter the level in which you're preaching or cutting, you can never do that. You will never succeed. I want to show you the scripture today. Now let's continue. So, you see, the guy went ahead. You know that later on, let's let's continue. Now, look at it. So, um, and Lot lifted up his eyes with sin and beheld all the plains of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of, of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to Zohar. Then Lot chose him all the plains of Jordan and left and lot journeyed east and they separated themselves the one from the other and abraham dwelt in the land of canaan and lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards sodom <laughs> verse 13 but the men of sodom were wicked and sinners before the lord god uh, before the lord exceedingly now look at the verse 14 the lord said unto, unto abraham after, after that lot was separated from him lift up now thy eyes and look from where from the place where thou art you know the bible says uh, uh, northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest i'll give i'll give to thee what does he mean now when god said lift up your eyes toward the north the east the south of course uh, abraham looked at where lot also went <laughs> and he possessed that land listen to me god said you shall possess the gates of your enemies of course uh, because abraham looked there he sees the place what does it mean to possess? In the book of Jeremiah 2, the verse 24. Oh my God. And 31 especially. The Bible says to arise in the 24th verse. Arise and pass over. Uh, anon, pass over. And then it says, for I have put, you know, I have put the king, the Sion, Sion, the king of the Amorites, in thy hand, who is over his bone. Begin to possess the land. In the verse thirty, uh, let me let me read to you. You know, so Abraham took over the land because he saw the place. God said, "Look, as far as you can see, I give to you." We have a way of possess, you know, possessing lands. And later on, God said to walk the length and the breadth of that same land. Um, Shola Karadoski. In the verse seventeen, God says, "Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto you." So long as you've seen it, just walk on it. <laughs> you take it. it. It is yours. So when you see Lot, you see, or Neymar walking, you see, um, uh, uh, Monica walking up and down like that, it was seizing, seizing a place in the palace. It was so physical during their time, but now we have what to do in the spirit. As you set your mind on it, and you declare, we walk with our mouth and our mind. As we confess with the heart, with the, with the heart we believe on the righteousness, and with our mouth we con with our mouth we confess, and are catapulted into the kingdom. So we journey with our mouth. Where our words go, we go. Our words have origin from our spirit, and they go to bring, they go. There's a destination. Your words are part of your destiny. Your words, the words you use. We are product of words. We are made out of words. Let us make man sustained by words. We also use words to create. 
we use words to demolish we use words to root out to break to plant to establish so god said to lift the eyes to look to northward southward eastward westward so definitely he looked toward that plane and he took it. after the guy was gone god said listen don't worry take over the land <laughs> I love, I love God, I love God, I love God, I love God, I love God. Arise and walk through the land. Now, go ahead and walk through the land. For as far as you can see, God said to him, To you I will give it. For the land will thou see it, to, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Oh, my God, I shout out Kadoski. Now, look at Deuteronomy. I want to read something. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Um, chapter 2. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, verse 24. Arise, now rise, rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over river Anon. And Anon means excitement, right? Pass over just being excited about what God is saying and get to get to you see, get to the details of it. Get to work, get to make things work. And it says, Behold, I have put in the, I've given into thy hand Sion. Sion means conclusion. It also means to root out. I have put into your hand anything that is able to destabilize or, 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 or hinder the performance of my word. Contained. And then it says, um, um, the Amorite and the king of Ishbon. Ishbon also means um, of, 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 of intelligence or creativity. See, um schemes also as well every high thing anything that at all that tries to um, dissuade your heart from seeing what god has said about your life now you possess the gates you have the audacity to stop them to cast them out cast imaginations down now look at this the first 20 20 um 31 31 and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have begun to I have begun to give Sion and his land before thee. Begin to possess that thou mayest inherit his land. So you have to possess first before you inherit. So possession, possession comes first. If the Lord says we are possessing the nations, you first need to possess the gates. Once you possess the gates, you have the land. You can access the land. So you begin to possess. For inheritance that you may inherit let your heart hold on to the words that i i share with you and you walk in it praise the lord now the book of esther very fast esther um the seed of the seed of the seed the seed <laughs> oh 2 11. Mordecai walked every day before the court of the woman the, of the woman's house to know how esther did and what became of her and I told you, you have to be walking in God's presence to know. Always to walk there to know, to know the state of, of your people, your flock, as a leader of your members. Um, also, what, what should become of them, what is ahead of them. The Bible says to ask me of things coming concerning my sons and concerning the, work, the works of my hand. In Isaiah 45, verse 11, commanding me to we open doors for our people. Now, um, let's look at Mordecai. In the verse 21, in those days, one Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the, two of the king's chamberlain, uh, Bethan, uh, Bethan and, and Teresh, of, the, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hand on the, on the king Azeros and Mordecai. You know, um, the, the, the Bible said the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther, and Esther also rehearsed that before the king, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles of the King. Right. Now, um, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, Zelegedel Ziko, brother Bahaya Dosi. Now let's look at this. Chapter three. Now in chapter three, verse one. And after these things, did King Azeros promote Haman? Haman was promoted, the son of Amedath, Amed, Amed, Amedata, the Agagites, and advanced him and set his sit above all the princes that were with him 
and all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not. And I told him, we don't bow to men, bowed not. Nor did he, nor did him reverence. <laughs> oh my God, I'm a seed of a Jew. You should know who I am. I'm not stubborn, I'm full of faith. We are kings. No king bow to the other king. No. Of course, if a king bow to the other king, it's because of um, the degrees of, of, of their royalty. See, their glory or their, and their honor. But I belong to the, 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 the glorious kingdom. The kingdom of all kingdoms. So I don't bow to men. Now look at it. Then the king's servant, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressed thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they speak daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand. For he had told them that he was a Jew. Why was he not bound? He said, I'm a Jew. <laughs> oh, look at it, look at it, look at this. This, this is where, the, this is where the, the, the drama begins. The drama. Now, and when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then Haman felt. Then was a man full of wrath, and he sought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to slay all the Jews, he joking, that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the, the people of Mordecai. Oh my God. Good, good, good. Now look at the verse, the verse, the verse seven. In the first in the first month, that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of the of, of King Ahasuerus. Uh, they they cast per that is the lot before Haman uh, from that day to from from from, from that day today and um, from month to month daily and monthly every month throughout the year to the twelfth month that is the month of Ada. Uh, Haman said unto uh, King Ahasuerus that is there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of the kingdom of that kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. They have different laws, different sort of laws. We are different. We don't bow to men. Sickness, the very sickness that kill that, that, that kills men cannot kill us. We we are different. We carry something. We are unique. Our makeup, uh, you know, we are we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We are fashion. We are refabricated in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are new. We are different. We are strange. Look at it. Look at it. Then it, the Bible says that. He said, they, they, need a, they, they need to keep the king's commandment, the, the laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them, to entertain them. You must um, cut them off. Let us decree that they are doomed to extinction. We are we have to extinct them from the land. Chapter 4, verse 1. And when Mordecai perceived... <laughs> All that was done when the car arranged his clothes. Oh my God. Laga do si kalaga. Rega de sufradiha. You know, the guy said, Listen to me. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm the enemy of the Jews. You can't be an enemy. Chapter 4, the verse 8. Oh, okay, let's go to chapter 6, rather. 6 first. The verse 8. Okay, so we started from. um. Oh my God! Uh, so, from verse five, and the king said unto, unto unto him, "Behold, Haman stands in the court." And the king said, "Let him come in." So a man came in, and the king said unto him, "What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor?" Now Mordecai thought in his heart, "To whom would the king delight to do to do honor more than any than myself?" If there's any man that the king wants to honor, always more qualified than myself because I'm above all the princes in the kingdom. Oh my God. See, Kradoski. The Bible said one night, see, as Mordecai was walking in the gate, he was in the gate. I want to show you something. In chapter 4, it was wrong for Mordecai to be in sackcloth. Right. But the guy didn't matter because he didn't care at all about that. There's a posture we assume in the spirit. Once we do that, Oh my God, once we do that, once we go before the Lord, bearing precious seed, once we go before the Lord, 
cry on the Lord, God, this avenge, avenge my cause. <laughs> uh, if you happen to be an enemy, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. We possess your gate. Look at how Mordecai possessed the gate of Haman. Look at it in Azeroth. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent, he rent his clothes. He tore his clothes, old English, and put on his clothes which, with, with ashes. And went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice, a loud and bitter cry. Oh, yeah, the guy went crying. God! Why? The Bible says, why do the hidden rage against the Lord and his anointed? Why? Do they imagine a vain thing? Why? Whatever they are planning to do is a vain thing. It, it shall not stand. No weapon fashion against you shall prosper. So listen to me. The Bible says, Behold, they shall gather together. Verse, the verse 15 of uh, Isaiah 54. Now, uh, they, they shall gather together, but not by me. When they plan against me, they shall fall. So why do they imagine vain things? Whatever they are thinking to do is vain. What Mordecai, what Emma was doing, what he was brooding upon, it, it was all vain. It did not hold. It didn't work against the seed of, of Abraham. It can't stand against a Jew. You can't fight a Jew and succeed. And we are the real the re Jews. Now look at it. He read his clothes and started crying. Marco Shalaba. He cried aloud. Rako Shalaba. Why is this happening? Why is this becoming a seasonal something? Why is it becoming a generational something? Why is it traceable to the family? Why is it happening to friends in this community? No, this must change. Look at the next verse. And came even on before the king's gate. For none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. The guy didn't. He didn't care at all. The next verse. And in every province, whatsoever the king's commandments and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther, Esther's maiden and her chamberlain came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grievous, and she sent Raymond to, to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Why? Because you're not supposed to be in the king's gate. In sackcloth, but the guy, guy said, Listen, <laughs> is there not a cause? Chapter 6 Oh, la grado, shatter like a lico fradabaha, some prakides. Oh, mm. thank you, Holy Spirit. Monica said something in the verse 13. Go and tell Esther, she shouldn't think that she's free. Look at it, you have to be helping a Jew. Oh my God! Uh, I'll bless those that bless you. That's what God said. Look at it, and they told it to Mordecai. Esther's word. Then Mordecai, verse thirteen of Esther four. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Think it not, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Ah, oh. our connection is not the physical connection, spiritual. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jew from another place. We are blessed. If you we come to you, it's a privilege to ask you to help us. If you fail, we can talk to you in the face. You can take it. Enlargement shall come. You see, it is better for you to disappoint us. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a scripture for that. For the years and the time and the moment that we were plagued, God gives us double for the troubles. So listen, there's enlightenment. If you like, if you don't like me and you realize I want something, you better bring it. If you don't bring it, you see me have the best of all. Beyond what you can ever give. That's the Christian. That's our blessing. Enlightenment shall come. You can all together hold your peace and be there. I don't care. But watch out. Watch out. Chapter 6. Look at this. In closing. Esther 6. 13. The Bible says, And Haman told Jeresh, his wife and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Jeresh, his wife unto him, If Mordecai be the seed of the Jews, 
if Mordecai be the seed of the Jews. Did you get it? Now look at it. <laughs> look at verse 10. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, take the apparel, the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew. You hated this guy. Go and give to him. You hated him, but go give to him. I want to read into the verse um, 13. It, it, it's so amazing. And then we end today's broadcast. From the verse 1. What, let's look at it. So one night the king could not sleep because, uh, yes, Mordecai had done something in the spirit, taking charge in the spirit. The Jews had fasted. They had wailed. They had cried. They had pushed, you know, the portals in, in the spirit. They had pushed some buttons and the gates were wide open and something needs to happen and some evil gate needs to be shut so they shut the doors of death against them they they, they, they reverse death they, they were able to to distinguish you know distinguish between life and death they said yes we love we love life and so they went ahead step on a pedestal and they said listen to me this is what we declare oh lord they cried on the lord we change situations now enough is enough we change the situation now and what happened the bible says one night the king could not sleep god will always touch the heart of a king or one prince to come your way and so it happened oh my god my god no noise no noise no noise no noise we make sound it was found written and he could not sleep and he asked that the chronicles be read to him hi yo yo hua and it was found written that Mordecai had told of, of Big Tana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, that the, the, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Azeroth. And the king said, What honor and dignity hast thou done to Mordecai for this? For this he is done. Then said the king's servant, that man said unto him, There is nothing done for him. Oh my God. And the king said, Who is in the courts? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house. To speak unto the king to hang Mordecai. He had been precipitating on something, thinking of something, to just how to kill this guy. To this, you know, letters were sent all around chapter 3 to dis destroy all the Jews. So the the time was ripe. And Mordecai perceived that in the spirit. And he changed the gears, the gears in the spirit. He, he switched to the realm of life. He said, listen, I will not possess your gates. <laughs> For you deciding to be my enemy, watch out. I take what you have now. I'm now coming after you. Now look at this. And uh, the Bible says, so Haman came in and the king said unto him, what shall be done for the, you know, verse 6. Unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. And now Mordecai thought it, it in his heart. To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? Let the royal apple. Now look at it. And Mordecai and Haman answered the king and for the man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought, which the king used to wear. What he used to wear. Oh my God. And the horse that the king rides rides upon, and crown the and a, and a crown royal which is set upon his head. And let his apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. So let the horse that the guy will ride on be given to the most noble princes of the princes. The most exalted of all the princes that he will proclaim it before the <laughs> before the one the, that the king decides to honor. Proclaim. Ha 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 ha. That he may arry the man with without whom the king delight to honor and bring him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaim before him, Thou shalt be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Then the king said unto him, Make haste, make haste, take the apparel and the horse. As thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew. Oh my God, the one you hate so much. You can't, you can't. You can't be my enemy. You can't be my enemy. Listen, you can't be my enemy. You can't be the enemy. You can't be an enemy to a Jew. You can't do it. You know what? I was somewhere on Thursday and then something happened. It's more spiritual attack. And this scripture came. I remember I shared with you. I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm a Jew. All laws in the spirit got suspended. They got suspended. I'm a Jew. I'm a seed of Abraham. 
we don't fail. We can't be imprisoned. You can't be incensed against us. You'll be in trouble. You can't be stared by the devil against us. You'll be in trouble. You can't be my enemy. You can't do it. No weapon. Numbers 23, 23. No weapon fashion against me. He says so. No, that, as the Lord liveth. No, ench no enchantment against Israel shall stand. No divination against Jacob. It can't. It can't. So look at what happened. He did it. And in the, in, in, in the verse 13. And Haman told Zerus his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zerus his wife unto him, If Mordecai be the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not, not prevail against him, but thou shalt fully fall before him. You can't rise before the king. My God, Haya. Before the king's child, I'm a Jew. I posted the gate. If, listen to me, anyone try, even if the director of the, that company decides, and understand it, Mordecai knew, on the, you know, on on a, on, a, on a official level, Mordecai is supposed to be um, a slave. Yes, they were in exile. But look at it. But look at it. He knew his place. He knew his place in the spirit. He knew. He dominated. He dominated. He took over. It took charge. And what happened? He was in throne. Listen, if your boss decides to be a, your enemy, you don't need to fight him. You know what to do. Possess the gates. Look toward the east, the west, the north, the south. If you hide that position, you take it. <laughs> Magalagada. This grace is activated today. No one can be your enemy. I want to read Isaiah in closing. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. For the one starting from verse 8 look at something i want to show you something that blessing over there is for the christian is that for the one thank you holy spirit okay so listen the verse 8 but thou israel art my servant jacob whom i have chosen the seed of abraham my friend the seed of abraham my friend The seed of Abraham, my friend. Now look at it. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am with thee. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against God, they say that ah, at the moment that God speaks to you, it's past. All they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they shall be as nothing. goes and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, thou shalt not find them. Even thou, them that contended with thee, it is then them that contend with you, that are contending with you. See. They that contended. Why? Because as God speaks, He speaks your future now. He speaks in the now, and that's your level. And know what happened before. Now, those that stood against you, you have the privilege to possess their gate. Not willfully, but so long as this is supposed to be your enemy. Mordecai never never envied or eyed the position of that Haman. No. You look at the story of the the three Hebrew guys in verse 17. Daniel 1. They told the king. Daniel 3. They told the king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We shall not bow to your image. No, we don't bow. We don't bow to men. We don't bow. If you want to be our enemy, so be it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. They shall be as nothing. Oh my God. Verse 15. Behold, I'll make thee a sharp, a, a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and thou shalt make hills as the hills as sharp. Father, I thank you. Go ahead and thank the Lord tonight. We have what it takes to possess the, the, the gates of our enemies. Anyone that contend against us will, will, be, will, will be dealt with by the anointing that we carry. We are the seed of Abraham. We don't fear. Come what may, we would always prevail. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. Father, we thank you tonight for your word that has come forth. Father, your word has blessed your people tonight. I know the light of your word 
as lighten up their world and they can see clearly through the dark lord you lead them for the leap, they leap over their walls so lord they run through the troops i decree by the grace of this message lord that anyone that is incensed against your people anyone that won't contend against your people lord they shall feel for their sake because they are the seed of, the, of abraham that everlasting covenant that makes them to possess the gates of them that hate them is activated i decree lord as abraham be of god and is a possessor of heaven and earth so are the seeds we possess all things bless them let there be no sense of lack for all things are theirs in jesus name if you have not given your life to christ you are not the seed of abraham by you not know, by chance you are a living you're living being one of the created beings of god but you need to be a born you need to be a child of god you need to be a seed of of abraham you need to say this after me it's a very um um but not prayer the rudiments of the spirit walk with god just say this after me say dear lord jesus i, I come to you today believe it, believe it with all of my heart that i'm a sinner i'm a seed of abraham of adam born as a natural man and all have seen and come short of the glory of god i acknowledge <clears throat> my state as a natural man i want to embrace the finished works of the cross that what you did for me you died for me and rose up again for my justification i believe that you are the savior of this world i give you my heart today come take my heart make it your own and let it be your home i declare that i'm born again i'm a child of god i am filled with the holy ghost i am a seed of abraham in jesus name amen god bless you so much i love you so much so we come and witness this week it's shalom keep basking in that glorious hope the blessedness of the children of god the kind of privilege inheritance we that we have as as um as heirs of the promise through faith that would god give to father abraham we are the seed of abraham we are blessed no man contains with us and survives to see the next day or to see the end of that which they imagined you are blessed god bless you i love you so much i want to meet you at the top i want to see you up there this month is a month of fulfillment for us all month of exceeding exceeding joy as a result of the fulfillment and you begin to see the newness because the gates are open i declare open gate unto you all traveling gate traveling doors and i pray that the heart of men are open unto you in jesus name amen god bless you i love you so much